So I, I wrote this piece. Um, I, I don't really explain every piece, but I, I just feel the need to explain this one. I wrote this one because um, homelessness bothers me, um, and I feel like I can't do anything about it, and I wish I could do something about it. Um, hopefully one day I can, but um, so I wrote this piece because of that. And any given night, he is one over. He is one of 650,000, and I see him on the corner, one street in advance. And my steering wheel eyes knows there's tragedy ahead, but I can't stop. And often occurrence, this isn't a special occasion, so my mind is less rose petal and more gas petal because I'm driven to help him out. He sticks out like a hitchhiker's thumb on an inner city highway. He's rode the road less traveled, been stabbed by their many forks. Cup shaking in his coffee black hands, he can't seem to squeeze out of his fingers, wounded warriors. Trying to hold on to each inch of life that hasn't been blown to pieces and it's still at arm's reach. He looks like a seasoned bingo player, just waiting for I-8. And I can tell he's wondering if I'm keeping score. I wish I can say he looks younger than he is, or at least the same age. But each day as of late seems to burn another birthday candle because he sees no light. He is dying slowly due to his past failures, cannibalism, his body a symphony of surrender. I wonder if he ever remembers a time he actually wants to remember, shipwreck of a man. I can't imagine anyone who would believe me if I told him I found the Titanic survivor. His words have a stench of silent dreams. How can such heaviness not fall before it hits my ears? He takes vacations in our conversations. I pray one day to never have to send him back. I want to know how far he can stretch the paraplegic limbs of the half a dollars he makes. If I was inside of him, I don't know if I'd be able to stand tall enough to look outside his eyes, his feet, more traveled than concrete. He is one of the millions of where's Waldos in a city that never sleeps, laying down that is, because many sleepwalk right past him. Sleepwalk without a pause, sleep talk in a fog, sleep on their facade. Did you see the fight in the baseball game, he asked me. I can tell the sound of ball hitting bat is one he once spent a great deal of time listening to. That smack is as familiar to him as his name. And that he hit many home runs playing street ball as a kid. The idea of peanuts and cracker jacks may distract him from the reasons he'd rather collapse. And now he spends most days in a pinch as a base runner, hoping to steal seconds before life throws him out. I can imagine how tired he is from constantly walking up a downward escalator. The closest he has gotten to family porches is the background of tourist pictures. Our small talk for some may appear as an anomaly. For us, it is intermission from monotony. We have more in common than our contrasting circumstances. We are both body. And right now, he is more vulnerable than I will ever be, and I see him on the corner, one street in advance. And my steering wheel eyes knows there's tragedy ahead, but I can't stop. But only one of us ever comes out alive enough to tell this story. Wow. That's it. Psycho and psycho are one and the same. Getting nowhere, running in circles, becoming insane. The Hunger Games wasn't just the movie. It wasn't just a lie. They know we'll kill each other in a hierarchy of desire. First example. Kids shoot kids every day, but it's never replayed. But then cop shoots kid and it's marketed on commercial display so kids can learn to lose faith and push back until they fill up more cages. We are being played. The 1% have come prepared. They say things like, since we can no longer physically possess people that's illegal and inhumane, we can still oppress them if we inundate them with rules and games, create the word economy when we know to us that means we want the green. Lie to every eye, disguise the genocide, call it enterprise. Then portray crime on TV, show them cry. Blame the hate, blame the race, utter lies, declare war, give them bombs, then tell them ease the pain, give them liquor, give them bombs. On their corners, though, not too far. Show them glitter, give them loans, because you're not in unless you own, and only when they're bitter, give them songs. Squash their dreams, give them jobs. Can't say how far ovulation should go, so we can label kids as learning disabled. Population control. Teach them talk, but to never question change their history, make them lessons, make their history for hidden agendas, manufacture stability, reward them with pensions, their heart has been ripped from their core at some point, so we can just build them malls and stores to fill the void, create multiple religions, wrap them in convictions, they'll argue over specifics and end up mentally in prison, 
uphold superficial standards. When they fail, prescribe pills because they're frail. Teach them forgive, but to never forget. If they resent each other, they won't progress. Keep disease alive to grow the money trees. Build plush hospitals so they can die comfortably, and when they achieve, hand them greed, hand them house, even degrees. They'll keep counting until they're better. Competition will end them altogether. I bet by now you know what you see isn't world news. It's scripted and shown to keep us in whirlpools, whirlpools of diets, riots, riots, cameras and lights that were mindless, whirlpools of violence, the insight compliance, they bake it, make it, and then we take what they're supplying. We continue to spill blood, spill guts, no glory. Civil wars are a little more than thoughts, but they're all stories, and families are unhappy, no more, just mourning. MLK said we figured out how to soar as birds and swim as fishes but have not learned to live as brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters fight. If they make it past those times, they pass the ceiling, the sky, healing, the day, the night, they can choose a new moon, new stars, new sun, new groove, new heart, new love. If we just starve the pride, there's no food for lies, but all this choosing sides is losing sight, and it's ruthless and blind, but we're caught in lives we feel forced to live. This island called make-believe. If only we spent time linking together, we'd end all this slavery, but our complacencies build agencies of maybe one day we'll be great, but see, we already are. And we might as well do something, be someone, love someone instead of living like lobsters waiting to die as game for their hunger. Under my skin, there is a time when the stillness of vacancy will reign supreme. When my arteries will no longer be my blood's rental property, when my mouth will become desert, and my brain stem a part of the earth's dirt. To a fly on the wall, this must be what an abandoned tenement building feels like after all the life is gone. So remember me now as I am. As someone who tries his very best to practice alchemy, not just because it sounds cool, and not to sound cynical, but all things do come to an end, and this is less about making lemonade out of lemons, and more about not allowing myself to be constantly burdened by my circumstances. Remember that under my skin lives claustrophobic insecurities, and when the paws of my own self-hatred suffocate my thoughts without a pause, my insecurities have no choice but to seep through my pores. Remember that I'm not always confident, but I'm confident in saying we don't always actually have to be, that I'm no knight in shining armor, their metal is used to protect their flesh, and while sometimes my flesh is used to protect the mess within, because some days I want to hide under my skin in the shade of my eyelids. Because each glimpse of light shows each inch of sight I don't like about myself. The floodgates in my eyes have been unleashed so many times my eyes would fall constantly like it's the only season. That sometimes I struggle to find a reason to keep them seeing, searching, reaching, to convince me of believing the true meaning of being is breathing. Because many breaths have waited for me to draw them a diagram for a way out of my diaphragm. Many years held hostage in my own ribcage because a self-conscious guard under my skin was too Fidel Castro to let them out to live. But remember, those vulnerable blues allowed me to put the hue in man. And although my back knows the tip of a knife like the back of my hand, I still believe in love. So remember, I wasn't afraid to tell a girl in her arms, I know the earth is round and I won't ever fall off. That I once said the only way I'd skydive is if I landed safely on someone like her. And here I am landed yet still feel so on top of the world. Remember, I believe in questions. Not to act bold but to be an asshole, but because I genuinely want to know the answers to things like, is it America the beautiful? America the brave? Or America the cubicle? America the slave? Is it America the home of opportunity or the road to lots of scrutiny? Is it America the land of the best? or well, the land of success with the backpack of debt, and if there's really a war on drugs, then tell me, why are the dealers with the green apprehended? But the fiends left to scream, feed me more, as they lean on the streets and park benches, and for the half a million soldiers who were raped while they scraped for the U.S. military. I wonder if they were told, be all you can be, when someone from their own platoon snuck in their room like a raccoon, I wonder if they knew that's how their favor would be returned. That if there's truly no child left behind, then why are so many tried as adults? That why do actions speak louder than words, but intentions neglected, when for all we know, some actions can be misunderstandings and symptoms of those affected by any number of events that go unmentioned, because we fail to just ask questions. That when I was fearful of being fearless, I felt my mother under my skin, and each time I wanted to give up and give in, I remember no one expecting a child says I'm ready for this kid, without being afraid of how unready they really are. Remember my loyalty. 
that I believe in unity, despite who says that's the fool in me with foolish dreams, that forgiveness, please and thank you, aren't good manners, but simply manners of the heart, that I found the friend, that I found the key to an F-R-I-E-N-D. It's to cherish the ones that don't cash in on the last three letters of that word, and that there is way more to say than those overplayed feel-good Facebook posters. Because abbreviations have no place in a world where there are more sentences in prisons than there are sentences within lips and under my skin. There is a time when the stillness of vacancy will reign supreme, and when the fly on the wall of my tombstone will be able to tell, despite how similarly hardened I was at times I lived, and that, yes, I slept with these messages in my head, but found repentance in the blessings of my pen, and that I didn't abandon this building, even in times when I wanted to evict myself. Wow. My mother knew how to raise the mother in me. I felt so different though because my father used to call me mantequilla. That means butter in Spanish. And because of that, sometimes I'd wonder if I was just too soft, too pliable, too bendable, too breakable. I wondered if my sensitiveness would be better served on a censorship list. If it would be better to weather my own emotions until they eroded in a road not known to be so gentle, it's just Events don't inherently come with names until we engage and attach one to the other as if all part of the same terrain. Hence the phrase chain of events. We as people make connections amongst events in order for them to make sense and my mother swears on the air that she breathes. So when they diagnosed her, I hope the doctors didn't blame it on her environment. When my friends would talk about that chick and want to bone her, bone would carry my body back to the skeletons in my closet. Back to 94 when he broke her arm and they just didn't understand why I wasn't like them. And while they were only concerned about getting in between that girl's hips when they boned her, I wanted to be her hips. The bones inside of her because without me she couldn't move alone and without her heartbeat I'd just be bones. I can't tell you how many times my mother was battered up on home's plate but we still dug out love. She was rocked quite often but was one hell of a mountain climber. She paid a hefty price to wear his fists. And they were the most expensive black and blue eye makeup I've ever seen. Their battles built graves on her body for the parts of her that died on his hands. And when my friends would talk about the girl that week, they'd pound and then show her the door. Well, it reminded me of the door that night. Pound, pound, pound. The door was the only thing between him and us. We hid in her room and I learned something about home that night. As long as you're with who you love, as long as both hearts are touched down, safety is irrelevant despite any possible punt towards our own end zone. Pound. Pound, pound, if only I were older, and if only each pound were a towel, I'd wipe the floor with him. And his words, his words were no less potent, no less explosive, and they gladly stepped in for his hands when they were too busy with their Heineken potion. And when my friends would brag about how many metaphorical lampshades they looked under in their room, how many lamps laid as mental trophies on the nightstand surrounding their bed, my mother always said if I let them shine in my mind, I wouldn't need not even one nightstand to hold them high. Spell a woman. A woman is a man on woe, and you can still be fly if you land on one. So just so you know, disrespect them, and you're kicking dirt on the land from which we all grow. And my father told me to go back where I came from so many times I realized. When most guys are treating the inside like a candy store, I found all the getting inside in the world won't matter until you feel like you found your golden wrapper. And when most guys are wishing that girl is blind enough to not see their ulterior motives, they've forgotten that most women have superpowers. All they see are invisible men. And I wanted to make her feel my words like braille for the unseen. I wanted to bring life to those frozen in time words once told to her because those I love you's and I miss you's from her past were just paralyzed from the neck down. They were just trying to get ahead. And what's alive needs oxygen to live and sooner or later she was only living to breathe life into those words and I wanted to breathe life back into her. And my mother taught me things. She said just because someone before you spent time in her boiler room doesn't mean they turn the heat on. She said no matter who smashed you make sure you love her to pieces and a girl's past is like cremated ash, it's been lived already. My mother said kisses are like stitches. They heal all wounds as long as they don't remain hidden in the bottom right corner of special occasion birthday cards because every kiss doesn't begin with K, they begin with lips. And so does every life. And it's time for us guys to start respecting where we came from. Thank you guys. Oh,